Okay, Glyn Juice here again with another Photoshop tutorial for you, and this time I want to cover increasing contrast in an image. Now, Photoshop being Photoshop, there are countless ways that we can increase contrast, but one of the side effects generally when we do that is that the colour in the picture can become quite saturated. Now, that might be the kind of look that you're going for, but if you're dealing with portraits of people, as in this case here, what can happen is when you increase the contrast, the colours become saturated, but in the colours in this instance will be the skin tones. So here's what I mean. Here we have a picture in front of us, and just uh, what I'll do is I'll select a nice strong contrast, just for illustration purposes. We can see straight away that contrast has been added, but also when we look at the skin tones and the hair, the colour in those areas really has been saturated as well. And when we're looking at skin tones, that's not the kind of thing that we want to do because it just doesn't look realistic. One way that we can deal with that is because this curves adjustment is on its own layer, we have available to us all the blend modes. And if I select luminosity, basically what I'm telling Photoshop to do is only to affect the light and dark portions of the picture, but not the colours. And that works pretty well. Now, talking of luminosity, one thing that we can also do is create luminosity masks one for the shadows and one for the highlights so that we can then alter the values of the shadows and the highlights independently of each other to get the kind of look we're after. Plus what we can do, we can create actions for those so that later on our workflow can become so much quicker. And here's what I mean. Right, let's say we have this portrait in front of us. First of all, let's create an action for boosting the highlights. So we'll go to our actions panel here and we'll create an action, we'll call it boost highlights. Oops, didn't even spell it right, but you get the point. Boost, boost highlights. The next thing we're going to do, we'll come over to our channels, we'll hold down our command or control key and click once on the RGB channel. And when we do that, when we look at our image now, we can see we have marching ants selecting a certain part of the picture. And basically what they're doing is they're selecting the luminosity values of the picture, which is in effect is the highlight areas. The next thing we're gonna do is I'll go back to our layers panel and create a curves adjustment layer like so. And when we do that, we can see that the mask that is generally created, which would normally be plain, now has the luminosity values loaded into it. So any adjustment I make now will only affect those areas. So the next thing to do will be to come over to our adjustments, our curves adjustment here, and I'll put a dot in the line in the top portion here, which is where the highlights are, like so and I'll use my up arrow key just to push that line just a little bit higher there. So it increases the highlights. Now when I do that, we can see that the remainder of the line as well also gets affected, and I don't really want that. So I'm just gonna put a few more pointers in here just to bring this line back to roughly where it was in the first place. So it follows it's kind of like its original path, like so. And then I'll also, all I shall do then is lower the opacity of this layer down to roughly 25%, something like that. Okay, so that is the uh, boost the highlights action created, so we'll stop that there. We'll then get rid of this, because we now we need to create one to boost the shadows. So we'll create a new action, and we'll call that boost shadows, and we'll move that aside. And just like before, all we'll do is come over to the channels, we'll hold down our command or control key, and while we do that, we'll then click once on the RGB channel, which then loads in the luminosity values of the picture, which in effect is the highlights. But we want the opposite of that because we want to now do one for the shadows. So to select the opposite, all we do, come to the top of the screen and click on select, and then inverse. Then go back to layers, and as before, just create a quick curves adjustment like so. And when we come over to the layers panel now, we can see that we have a different mask, which is now selecting the shadow values within the picture, not the colours, just the dark values, the dark luminosity values in the picture. Okay, then all I'll do is come up to the curves adjustment here, the curved line, and we'll put one dot just about there, which is the lower left-hand portion of the line, which is where the shadows are, and using my down arrow, we'll just bring it down just a fraction to darken those shadows. Obviously, the rest of the line has been altered as well, so what I'll do is put a few more dots around here to bring the line back to follow its original path or as near as damn it, something like so, and reduce the opacity of that layer down to 25% as well. Okay, and then we shall stop recording. So now what we've done, we can see we've created two actions, one for boosting the highlights and one for boosting the shadows, but none of those boosts in contrast will affect the color. 
And we can now use those in later sort of post-processing to speed up our workflow. So let's just say we've got this picture here and I want to increase the shadow areas of this picture. All I need to do is click on the area here that says boost shadows in my actions panel and just click play. And we can see that each time I do that, the shadow portions of the picture are going to be go made a lot darker. And now if I sort of come over to the layers panel here and I'll just show you the before and after, we can see obviously that's way too far, but it just gives you an idea of what we can do there just by quick clicking on an action which we created earlier. And obviously when we do this, we're going to get quite a few layers uh, building up. So all I would do then is I'd just click on the top one, shift click on the bottom one, and then just put new group from layers, and I'd call that shadows. And we can then do that for the highlights as well. So if I then go to highlights, click play just the once, and just one more time. So then now we can then just put those into their own layer, new, and we'll go to new group from layers, and we'll call that highlights, spelled correctly that time. So, oh, no, done that wrong, let's <laughs> just come out of there. Click on that one, shift click on the second one, and we'll go new group from layers, and we'll call that highlights. So there you go, there's two actions created, one for boosting the highlights, one for boosting the shadows, but the main thing is that when we do that, it's nice and quick, but the color isn't being affected at all. So there we go, that's it for now. I shall catch you next time. <laughs>